Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Gentlemen, thank you for being here and for your service to our country. Uh, I, like my colleague, uh, agree that we want, all of us want to see our troops return to home as quickly as possible. And General Petraeus, I know that you are knowledgeable of the findings of the most recent national intelligence estimate on Iraq. Uh, at this point in time, uh, no portion of the most recent Iraq NIE has been declassified, so we can't talk about the findings uh, of that assessment, at least in, o in an open hearing like this. But uh, in the unclassified key judgments from the August 2007 update, it stated there, are, there have been measurable but uneven improvements in Iraq's security situation since our last national intelligence estimate on Iraq in January of 2007. Again, that, that was the August NIE, the, the declassified portion. So as someone like many of my colleagues here uh, today who has studied the current NIE and previous intelligence estimates, I have to say that the situation in Iraq, as, as has been verified by the, the uh, Director of National Intelligence, is somewhat inconsistent with the actions that you are recommending or proposing in, in terms of uh, the drawdown uh, of the surge. So my question is, uh, and actually two questions. First of all, has the security situation on the ground in Iraq changed so much that we can actually start pulling back the surge uh, forces? Uh, and the second question is, what happens if the security situation changes during the so-called 45-day pause? Are, are we going to reinstate the surge? Uh, and if we are, how long can such a reconstituted surge be sustained, in your opinion? Uh, first of all, I, again, I would not have recommended uh, drawing down the surge if I did not think that the security uh, progress enabled that, uh, not just in terms of all the metrics that I've shown, but also in the uh, slowly but steadily improving capabilities of Iraqi forces, Iraqi governance, and, and other uh, aspects that we take into account. Uh, irrespective uh, of what's happened in Basra? Uh, ir Has irrespective that of that. Any, any uh, no, in fact, the Iraqis are in the lead in Basra, Congressman. Again, they are the, the ones. We have some transition teams. We have some advisors. Uh, we certainly have provided enablers in the form of intelligence, surveillance, reconnaissance, uh, close air support, which the Iraqis do not have in su a sufficient capability and yet, but are developing. Uh, but, but, but in your statement, you also said that the, the current situation is fragile and, and reversible. So you're not concerned that Basra could be the, the string that would start unraveling the rest of the fragile stability that you talked about? Uh, in, in fact, uh, in the other southern provinces, it's a reason I highlighted that, because they could succumb to the same kinds of challenges uh, that you have in Basra. Uh, and there were attempts by militia uh, elements in these other southern provinces, virtually all of them that are south of Baghdad uh, down to Basra, uh, and uh, again in all but really one Mason. Uh, which is the Marsh Arabs who have always been out of control, weren't under control under Saddam, and aren't under control uh, by anybody right now either, frankly. Uh, but uh, uh, the rest of those have uh, done well. In fact, the Iraqi forces in those areas with uh, small assistance, if any, from uh, our forces have uh, been equal to the task of ensuring the, the continued security in those areas. So. Uh, I do believe, I think we can move this forward and, and, uh, and continue on the course that we're on. So, so if at any point in that 45-day pause security deteriorates, uh, what does that mean? What, what contingency plans do we have? Will you reinstate the surge? Or? I, 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 I mean, that would be a pretty remote uh, thought in my mind uh, for a variety of different reasons. One is the strategic considerations that I've explained. The other is we do have an ability to move some forces around, obviously, and we would certainly want to do that, both Iraqi forces as well as our forces. Uh, again, the Iraqis have now built uh, some capability to respond in the form of the emergency response unit and the Ministry of Interior, uh, this very substantial and very good Iraqi Special Operations Force Brigade uh, and a, a number of these so-called SWAT, but they're much more than SWAT teams in many cases, 
uh, in Hilla, for example, it's a SWAT battalion, and they've moved these around and they've used these as required, and that would certainly be the uh, the option that we would want to see exercised. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Chairman.